six asset allocation strategies that drive profits. Establishing an appropriate asset mix is a dynamic process and it plays a key role in determining your portfolio's overall risk and return. As such, your portfolio's asset mix should reflect your goals at any point in time. There are a few different strategies of establishing asset allocations, and here I'm going to outline some of them and examine their basic management approaches. The first one is strategic asset allocation. Strategic asset allocation is a method that establishes and adheres to what is base policy mix. This is a proportional combination of assets based on expected rates of returns for each of these asset classes. For example, if stocks have historically returned 10% every year and bonds have returned 5% per year, a mix of 50% stocks and 50% bonds would be expected to return 7.5% per year. The next strategy is constant weighing asset allocation. Strategic asset allocation generally implies a buy and hold strategy even as the shift in the values of asset cause a drift in the initially established policy mix. For this reason, you may choose to adopt to a constant weighing approach to asset allocation. With this approach, you continually rebalance your portfolio. For example, if one asset were declining in value, you would purchase more of that asset. And if that asset, asset value should increase, you would sell it. There are no hard and fast rules for the timing of portfolio rebalancing under strategic or constant weighing asset allocation. However, a common rule of thumb is that the portfolio should be rebalanced to its original mix when any given asset class moves more than 5% from its original value. The third strategy is tactical asset allocation. Over the long run, a strategic asset allocation strategy may seem relatively rigid. Therefore, you may find it necessary to occasionally engage in short-term tactical deviations from the mix in order to capitalize on unusual or exceptional investment opportunities. This flexibility adds a component of market timing to the portfolio, allowing you to participate in economic conditions that are more favorable for one asset class than for others. Tactical asset allocation can be described as a moderately active strategy since the overall strategy asset mix is returned to when desired short-term profits are achieved. This strategy demands some discipline as you must first be able to recognize when short-term opportunities have run their course and then rebalance the portfolio to the long-term asset position. The next strategy is dynamic asset allocation. Another active asset allocation strategy is dynamic asset allocation, with which you constantly adjust the mix of assets as markets rise and fall and the economy strengthens and weakens. With this strategy, you sell assets that are declining and purchase assets that are increasing, making dynamic asset allocation the polar opposite of a constant weighing strategy. For example, if the stock market is showing weakness, you sell stocks in anticipation of further decreases. And if the market is strong, you purchase stocks in anticipation of continued market gains. The next is insured asset allocation. With an insured asset allocation strategy, you establish a base portfolio value under with which the portfolio should not be allowed to drop. As long as the portfolio achieves a return above its base, you ex exercise active management to try to increase the portfolio value as much as possible. If, however, the portfolio should ever drop to the base value, you invest in risk-free assets so that the base value becomes fixed. At such time, you would consult with your advisor on reallocating assets, perhaps even changing your investment strategy entirely. You can implement insured asset allocation strategy with a formula approach or a portfolio insurance approach. The formula approach is a graduated strategy as the portfolio value decreases 
you purchase more and more risk-free assets so that when the portfolio reaches its base level, you are entirely invested in risk-free assets. With the portfolio insured approach, you would use or you would put options and or future contracts to preserve the base capital. Both approaches are considered active management strategies, but when base amount is reached, you are adopting to a passive approach. Insured asset allocation may be suitable for risk averse investors who desire a certain level of active portfolio management, but appreciate the security of establishing a guaranteed floor below which the portfolio is not allowed to decline. For example, an investor who wishes to establish a minimum standard of living during retirement might find an insured asset allocation strategy ideally suited to his or her management goals. And the last strategy is integrated asset allocation. With integrated asset allocation, you consider both your economic expectations and your risk in establishing an asset mix. While all of the above mentioned strategies take into account expectations for future market returns, not all of the strategies account for investment risk tolerance. Integrated asset allocation, on the other hand, includes aspects of all strategies, accounting not only for expectations, but also actual changes in capital markets and your risk tolerance. Integrated asset allocation is a broader asset allocation strategy, albeit allowing only either dynamic or constant weighing allocation. Obviously, an investor would not wish to implement two strategies that are competing with one another. So, in conclusion, asset allocation can be an active process to varying degrees or strictly passive in nature. Whether an investor chooses a precise asset allocation strategy or a combination of different strategies depends on that investor's goals, their age, their market expectations, and risk tolerance. Keep in mind, however, that this gives only general guidelines on how investors may use asset allocation as part of their core strategies. Be aware that asset allocation approaches that involve anticipating and reaching to market movements require a great deal of expertise and talent in using particular tools for timing these movements. Some would say that accurately timing the market is next to impossible, so make your strategy make sure it's not too vulnerable to unforeseen errors.